from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering IBM Think 2018. Brought to you by IBM. We're back at IBM Think 2018. My name is Dave Vellante. I'm here with Peter Burris, my co-host. And you're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, our day two of our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of IBM Think. Madhu Kochar is here. She's the Vice President of Analytics and Product Development at IBM, and she's joined by Pat Mektuka. Close Thank enough. You. Chief Data Officer at NetBank. Ladies, welcome to theCUBE. You have to say your last name for me. Patricia Mektuka. Oh, you didn't, you didn't click. I did, oh, Mark Pachuca. Okay, amazing. <laughs> I wish I could speak that language. Well, welcome. Thank you. Good Thank to you. see you again. Thank you. Uh, so, let's, let's start with IBM Think, new show for you guys. You consolidated you know, six big tent events into one. There's a lot of people, there's too many people to count, I've been joking. It's 30, 40,000 people, we're not quite sure, but how's the event going for you? What are clients telling you? Yeah, no, I, I mean, to your point, yes, we brought in all three big pillars together, uh, a lot of folks here. Uh, from data and analytics perspective, an amazing, amazing event for us. Uh, highlights from yesterday with Arvind Krishna on our research, what's happening, right. you know, five for five, that was really very inspiring for all of us, you know, looking into the future. And it's not all about technology, it was all about how we are here to help protect the world and change the world. So that, as a, as a, as a, geek as an engineer, that was just so inspiring. And uh, as I was talking to our clients, they walk away with IBM as, as really a solution provider and helping, so that was, that was really good. Um, I think today's uh, Janice uh, keynote was very inspiring as well. Uh, from our clients, we got our, some of our key clients, you know, NetBank is here with us. And um, we've been talking a lot about our future, our strategy. We just announced, uh, Ginny actually announced our new product, um, IBM Cloud Private for data. Everything around data, you know, how at the, um, uh, where we are really bringing the power of data and analytics all together on a private cloud. So that's a huge announcement for us. And we've been talking a lot with our clients and the strategies resonating. Um, and particularly where I come from in terms of the governance and integration space, uh, this is definitely becoming now the wow factor because it helps stitch the entire solutions together and provide you know, better insights to the data. So, so Pat, it's, it's, from your perspective, you're coming from Johannesburg, so you probably like the fact that there's all IBM in one, so you don't have to come back to three or four conferences every year, but um, love your perspectives on that, and can you please tell us about NetBank and your role as Chief Data Officer. Uh, NetBank is one of the big five uh, financial um, banks in, in South Africa. Um, I've been appointed as a CDO about 18 months ago, so it's a new role in the bank per se. Mm. However, we are going through tremendous transformation in the bank, and especially our IT ecosystem is being uh, transformed because we need to keep up with what is happening in the IT world. Are you the bank's first chief data officer? Definitely, yes, I'm the first. Okay, so you're a pioneer. I have to ask you then, so where, where did you start when you took over as a chief data officer? I mean, banking is one of those industries that tends to be more chief data officer oriented, but it, it's a new role, so where did, where did you start? Well, we are not necessarily new in the data right. uh, per se. We have had traditional data warehousing um, functions in the organization with traditional warehousing or data roles in, in, in the organization. However, the chief data role was never existent um, in the bank. In actual fact, the bank up, uh, appointed uh, two new roles. Um, 18 months ago. One of them was the chief digital officer, who's my colleague, and myself being appointed as the chief data officer. Interesting, okay, I talked to somebody from Northern Trust yesterday, and she was the lead data person, and she, she said, I had to start with a mission. We had to define the mission first, and then we looked at the team, and then we evolved into uh, you know, how we contribute to the business, how we improve data quality, who has access, what skills we needed. Does that seem like a logical progression? Or did you take a similar path? I think every bank will look at it differently or every institution. However, from a net bank perspective, we were given a gift by the regulator. 
in bringing the BC, BCBS 239 compliance in, into play. So what the bank then did that, how do we leverage not just being compliant, but <laughs> leveraging the data to create competitive advantage and to create new sources of revenue. Okay, um, let's talk about, and, and Madhu, we talked about this in New York City, you know, governance, compliance, kind of an evil word uh, to a lot of business people, although your contention was, look, it's a reality. You can actually turn it into a positive. So, talk about that a little bit and then we can tie it into NetBank's experiences. Yeah, so I firmly believe in, you know, in the past, governance 1.0 was all about compliance and regulations, very critical, but that's how it grew. Uh, I, I believe now it's all about governance 2.0 where it's not just the compliance, but how do I drive insights? You know, so data is so, so critical from that perspective. And uh, driving f insights quicker to your businesses is going to be very important. So as we engage with NetBank and other clients as well, they are turning that because they are incumbents, they know their data, they got a lot of data, you know, some of, you know, sitting in structured, unstructured land. And it's really, really important that they're quickly able to assess what's in it, classify it, right? And then quickly deliver the results to the businesses which they're looking for. So we are, I believe, in the era of governance 2.0. And uh, compliance and regulations are always going to be with us. And we are making actually a lot of improvements in our technology, introducing machine learning, how we can do these things faster and quicker. So one of the first modern pieces of work that Peter and I did uh, was around uh, data classification, and that, that seems to be, I've heard this theme before, it seems to be a, a, a component or, or a benefit of sort of putting governance in place, that you can automate data classification and use it to affect policy. But, but Pat, from your standpoint, how do you approach governance? Uh, what are the, the business benefits beyond we have to do this? Like, like I earlier on alluded to, we took uh, the regulation as a gift and say, how do we turn this, this regulation into uh, benefits for, for the organization? So in looking at the regulation, we then said, how do we then structure the approach? So we looked at the two prongs. The first was the, the right to win. The right to win meaning that um, we are able to utilize the right to compete approach from a regulation perspective to create a platform and a foundation for analytics for our organization. We also created a blueprint for our enterprise data program. And in the blueprint, we also came up with key nine principles of what it means to stay true to our data, i.e. you mentioned uh, classification, you mentioned data quality, you mentioned lineage. Those are the key aspects within our, our um, uh, principles. The other key principle we also inculcated was the issue around duplication. How do we ensure that we describe data once, we ingest it once, but we use it multiple times to answer different questions? And as you are aware, in analytics, the more you mine the data, the more inquisitive you become. So it is, sorry, it's moving from data uh, to information, information to insights, and eventually insights to foresight. So looking into the future and how you bring it back uh, into, into data. And, and also some points that you made that. Um, so the, the concept is, uh, one of the challenges of using the fuel uh, example is that governance of fuel is still governance of a thing. You can apply it here, you can apply it there, you can't apply it to both places. Data is different. You were very, very accurate when you said we want to define it once, we want to adjust it once, we want to use it multiple times. That places a very different set of conditions on the types of govern governance. And in many respects, in the past, other types of assets, where there is this sense of scarcity, it is a problem. But one of the things that I'm, and this is a question, is the opportunity, you said the regulatory opportunity, is the opportunity, because data can be shared, shouldn't we start treating governance really as a way of thinking about how to generate value out of data? 
and not a way of writing down the constraints and how we use it. What, what do you think about that? I think you are quite right because the more you give the people the opportunity to go and explore, so you unleash empowerment, you unleash freedom for them to go and explore. They will not see governance as a stick, like I initially indicated, but they see it as business as usual, so it will come naturally. However, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, people need to be matured, organization needs to be, to be matured. Um, now, the first step you have to do is to create those policies, create awareness around the, the policies, and make sure that the people who are utilizing the data are trained into what are the do's and the don'ts. Uh, we are fully aware that cybersecurity is one of our biggest threats. So you can also not look at how you uh, create uh, security around your data. People knowing that how I use my data, it is an asset of the bank and not an asset of an individual. I know you guys have to go across the street, uh, but I wanted to get this in. You're a global, analytics global elite client. I want to understand what the relationship is. I mean, IBM, why IBM? Maybe make a few comments about your relationship with the company. Yeah, I think we as NetBank, we were privileged actually to be inculcated into this global elite uh, program of IBM. That has helped me in actual in advancing what we need to do from a data perspective because anytime I can pick up a phone uh, to collaborate with the IBMers, I can pick up a phone whenever I need support, I need guidance, I don't have to struggle alone because they've done it with all the other clients before. So why should I reinvent the, the wheel? Whereas someone else has done it, so let me tap into that so that I can progress quicker mm -hmm. rather than try it first alone. All right, yeah. Madhu, we'll give you the final word um, so on Think and your business and so your Think is amazing. You know the opportunity to meet with all our clients and coming from product development, talking about our strategy and getting that validation is just good. You know, sharing open roadmaps with clients like NetBank and our other global elites. You know, uh, it gives us an opportunity not just sharing of the roadmaps, but actually a lot of co-creation, right, to take us into the future. So I'm having a blast. I got to go run over and meet a few other clients, uh -huh. but thank you for having us over here. It's a pleasure. You're very welcome, and thank you so much for coming on and telling your story, Pat, and would you always thank a pleasure you. to see you. Thank you. All right, got to get in your high horse right. and go. <laughs> okay. uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be okay. right back after this short break. You're watching theCUBE live from IBM Think 2018. Be right back.